Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman or at Schneems on the internet. I'm here right now to talk to you about Git. Git is version control. So what exactly is version control? You might remember at one point in time in your life, you created a document. Let's say it's um, homework.doc and then you decide that um, you've done a pretty okay job, but you want to you want to take uh, some different directions. You don't want to completely just save over all the work you've done, uh, but you want to, you know, maybe uh, completely uh, rewrite one uh, one paragraph or, or one chapter, however long your homework is. So you, you make a new document. You make it, um, you know, homework1.doc, and then you're going along for a little while, and then you make some more changes to it, and you decide, oh, you know, hey, I really want to, I really want to change the entire theme of the paper. So um, you save that, and then you open up a new document, and you call it uh, homework2.doc, and it's a little different from your first one, and, and you keep on going on with this pattern, and you've got homework2, and then eventually you've got homework2 final, and you think you're close to being done, and then you realize you need to make some other adjustments and you've got homework two, final two, and then homework two, final two, really final dot doc. Well, there is a better way we can use version control. So we're going to be using Git as version control. And instead of a, a simple .doc file, um, we're actually going to be keeping our code into version control. So I think a example is in order. All right, uh, let's just go ahead and open up a text document. So here we've got foo.txt, and there's nothing in it. So we can say this is an example document. All right, so I saved it, and now I will actually um, create a new Git repository. So I will run Git in it. If I run git status, it will tell me that, okay, it looks like I have this text document, foo.txt, that is untracked. That means it's not in our version control. So I can add it. I can run git add dot. Going to go ahead and just clear that and then take a look at status again. Now it says, okay, um, there's nothing in untracked, but it says changes to be committed. So I have this added to my version control, but I haven't committed it. Um, this means I can go back and, and modify it more, uh, but I'd like to go ahead and commit this. So I'm gonna say git commit. I'm gonna pass in a message and um, each commit needs messages. This is so you as a human can actually read and understand your commits. So we're gonna say initial commit. That's uh, pretty standard for your first one. Now, if we say git status, Nothing to commit, so working directory is clean. Let's uh, let's see what happens if we modify this file a little bit. So if I make it two lines instead of one, and I say, you know, isn't that awesome? You know, go ahead and save that. Now in Git, I can run Git status, and it will see again that I have this file. It is it is modified. So let's. Um, Let's do that whole dance again. We're going to add and then commit it. So git add. Um, I could just add that file .txt, or I can just add everything, which there's no reason not to right now. And then I can commit it. Git commit uh, added content. All right. So I, I like to use a tool called GitX, which actually helps uh, visualize your repository. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Um, you don't necessarily need it. You can do what we're about to do uh, using the tools built into Git, but I think it makes a little bit more sense to visually see it. So we're going to run GitX and then open it. You can install GitX. It is free, open source. All right, I've got GitX open, and here you can see this is my repository. We can see those two commits. Here's initial commit and then added content. Um, so we started out and we just added the content or with the initial commit, said this is an example document. And then in added content, you can actually see where this is changed. Um, so 
we were effectively doing what we were previously doing in the homework one, homework two, homework two final uh, example, where we we are keeping a reference of what the document used to be, but um, we also have what it currently is. So this this really helps, and you can um, roll forwards in time. You can you can roll backwards in time. You can see all of the different things that have happened to change to your documents, and this is really convenient for code. Um, it gets even more convenient when you add extra developers. Uh, it helps you keep track of that, as well as managing forks and uh, and pull requests. If I modify modify this before. All I do is add a, you know, an exclamation to this, and I save. I'm going to go back to git x, and git x also has, has a visual way to add files and commit them. So here we take a look at our unstaged changes, food.txt, and you can actually see in red, I removed example.document and added um, an exclamation mark. So what, typically whenever you have a, a red and a green right together it just means that you modified it, um, which which makes sense because that's really all you're doing. You're actually essentially deleting a, a line and then uh, changing a part of it. So we can uh, we can commit this, or sorry, we can add this. And here, these are our stage, staged changes. And then we can add a commit message like we did before, except we'll, we'll, you want it to be pretty descriptive. It's a little difficult in this contrived example, but um, we can say added... Um, added mark, added exclamation mark. So now if I commit this, that's going to be all in our source control and we can actually see this in our branch. So now we have, um, we have initial added content and added exclamation mark. Um, so a good commit message, and these aren't great, unfortunately for this, uh, again, somewhat contrived example, um, just simply because uh, they're not they're not that descriptive. You want people to be able to look at these and uh, in a human readable way actually jump to a commit and understand what's going on in it. Um, but here you can you can actually see the different changes. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about Git. We're going to go back to our slides. All right. So uh, previously we showed you this workflow. You're gonna you're gonna save a document. You're going to add it to your Git repository. Then you're going to commit it. This is gonna. This is going to lock it down. Uh, when you do this, you are also going to be providing it with a message. You then might change that document. You add uh, that change to Git. It keeps a reference of both of those changes. And again, we commit it with a, another message. Here, completed section two. Maybe you're doing a, a series of sections. Uh, so the the general theme is we're going to modify files. We're going to add them to our repository. We are going to commit and then repeat as necessary. Uh, typically, anytime you make uh, large changes or you move on to a different section, you want to um, you want to break those out into small atomic commits. So um, as we pointed out, this actually helps us to track changes. This is actually a screenshot of the um, the homework and the the project, the example project you guys are getting ready to work on in just a little bit. Where um, here in the the red and the green section together, I I just modified I, instead of perform four basic functions, I said perform a few functions because I added a couple more, um, and then I added some extra text warning people that code that starts with a dollar sign um, indicates that is running in the terminal and don't copy the dollar sign. So uh, it's pretty convenient to actually just see what changed in each of those commits. What's really cool is we can actually use Git to roll back in time. Several several times I've been working with uh, working with people. I volunteer on a service called Rails Hotline. You should check out Rails Hotline if you have some Rails questions, actually. And um, several times somebody's called in and said, "Okay, I've got this project and it was working, but it's not working anymore." So I say, "Well, what changed?" And they say, "I don't know." So I the first thing I tell them to do is look in Git. And if when you get something working, if you commit it then you'll know that it's in a in a good and solid state and you can actually see all of the different things you modified and then hopefully pick up any any types of errors that you made in that um, it's good to visually be able to look back over those changes uh, so it is git you can use it for time travel uh, one of the other great things about Git, it is distributed, so you can actually store this on your on multiple machines. So you're actually you're actually keeping 
um, a copy of your code on different machines. An example of that, you can clone code from your local machine up to a server. Um, typically, if you have anything really important that you absolutely positively can't lose, it's a good idea to keep it um, in a minimum of three places. So if you're writing code, code takes a lot of time to generate. Uh, and you might want to store that locally as well as on a server somewhere. Um, this is going to help us with um, backup and data retrieval as well as later on we're actually going to see that Git is going to make it much easier to work in Teams. Um, so here's an example of what uh, Git might look like if you had three copies of the of the same code um, and you can push to all of those different sources. Uh, typically you'll have one primary and we would most likely keep that in a server uh, called uh, and typically we'll use a service called github. So github.com is used for hosting Git repositories. Uh, it's great because they also have a free open source tier. So if you just are making publicly available code that anyone can see, you can use it for free whenever you want private hosting. That's kind of when you start paying. Uh, so throughout this class, this is actually how we'll be showcasing our, um, we're going to be storing our code and, and showcasing it and even, even using it um, for the students actually taking the class to submit homework uh, for those of you not taking the classes viewing online. Unfortunately, I won't be grading your homework, but uh, you can still, you, you should still definitely go ahead and uh, and do it. Um, so GitHub sits in a cloud. You typically will develop locally and then push to GitHub. Um, again, this works really great if you have multiple machines. You have multiple people working on the on the same project. Um, I love this because you know at any given time, almost everything I care about on my personal machine is on GitHub. Um, and it's also nice for the open source community that if you have a project, it's probably going to be on GitHub and you can just view the source right there. They have a very nice, very convenient interface. Um, in addition to that, a lot of, if you are looking for a programming job, a lot of people will just ask you for your GitHub URL. And if you have worked if you have done anything that you are publicly displaying, they can see that. Uh, so for the final project of this course, you'll actually be building your own website. Well, putting it on GitHub is a great way to showcase your um, your actual coding skills. So you can actually push that your push your website up to Heroku and have a running copy, and then you can uh, store your your code on GitHub, and people can actually view and browse the code, so they can see. Um, you know, kind of see your handiwork. It's a, it's a great way to delve into kind of the craftsmanship of code. All right. So I've been talking about this exercise all, um, all week, I guess, for those of you following along in video. Uh, please go to github.com slash schneem slash server, or I'll have a link to it, uh, hopefully wherever you find this video, and go through all of the exercises. Um, we're going to start out generating some HTML. I've written a simple script that allows you, um, well, first of all, you're going to be starting off with ERB. From there, we're going to move on to generating HTML with ERB. We're going to use layouts to generate HTML um, or HTML with layouts. Then finally, we are going to actually start using servers to serve that content. Um, we're going to progress from serving static HTML files to dynamic uh, dynamically parsed ERB, and finally, we're actually going to get some data back from our server. And all of this is using 100% Ruby code. Um, so at the very beginning, we have some instructions on how to um, how to use Git. You're actually going to fork this project. Uh, if you go to this page, there's going to be a button called fork, and then that will create this project in your GitHub repository. You will need a GitHub us user account uh, to make this work. From there, there's going to be a URL in the middle of the page, and what you want to do, you want to copy that, go into terminal, and type git space clone space, and then paste in that URL. And that what that is going to do, it's going to copy the code from the GitHub URL onto um, your local machine, and it'll do it wherever you say. So you might want to you might want to open up a terminal and make a new directory and just call it projects and, and bring it into the projects. Then for each section, you want to commit that, and um, there is a section that says submit a pull request uh, whenever you're done. Um, actually, I feel free to do that, but um, I'm not going to grade them. Maybe other people might want to look at it and see some of the things that you did. 
um, could be uh, could be an interesting an interesting way to see other people's. So give that a shot. It should be a it'll be an introduction into uh, using Ruby and focused on generating views. Uh, the students in the class really really enjoyed the exercise. So hopefully you will too. If you run into any questions or any problems, please first Google it. Um, check your check your logs if there are any. Um, take a look at your error messages. Google the error messages that you get. If you're not getting any error messages, um, keep working until you do. If you still get lost, you're still confused, you can always post onto stackoverflow.com and they will help you um, help you out. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the exercise as much as I enjoyed writing it. And uh, have a great day. Tell your friends.